Well, since you were all good enough to sit through that little episode of Nightmare Fuel, I figured I'd explain what in the hell is going on. Um, basically what I was doing was I, I looked at my to-do list and I kind of panicked. I had, I had so many things on my list to, to do. And I, I realized I had all these... I, 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 but I've been listening to comments and a lot of you have been saying, like, you want me to do more games. And I'm like, well, I kind of do games, but I do them where I make fun of them, like Ripper, Phantasmagoria, things like that. I really should do more reviews of games. And I think the main reason I, I have put them aside for a while anyway, is because they actually take a lot longer to do. Because you have to get a lot of footage for them, and me being lazy, I decided not to do that. Uh, movies are much easier in that way. But uh, I do like doing games, so I have a big stack of games. Uh, games that I know are bad, and games that uh, I hear are bad, or at least very interesting to look through. And I went to a used bookstore, and I picked up like literally a shelf full of games, like uh, FMV games, NES games that I'd never heard of. Uh, mainly a lot of PC games that I just I'd never even seen before. Um, games like there, there's one for the Planet of the Apes, the Tim Burton Planet of the Apes that I'd never heard of. There's one for the Arrival, which is a game based on the Charlie. I think it's a Charlie Sheen movie about aliens coming to Earth. I'd never heard of that. Uh, just a ton of games like that, and uh, mainly since I was in this big FMV kick for a long time, kind of still am. I found all these games that were early FMV titles, like uh, you know, okay ones like Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. Things I picked up as curiosities back in the day, and a bunch I'd seen, but had never actually looked at. And one that actually had a very striking cover to me at the time was uh, The Madness of Roland. Uh, I never picked it up back in the day, um, although it was very interesting because it actually had... This is probably one of the earliest uh, CD-ROM games. I, I can't say for certainty, but probably. Certainly one of the first that actually had, like... Uh, full motion video with actual live actors in it. And um, I mean, those happen pretty early, but if you look at the videos on this disc, they are a horribly poor quality. You know, back in the day when any kind of video was this big landmark deal, the videos on this thing are shot in like the earliest version of QuickTime ever imagined, like 1.0 or earlier. Uh, the videos are about the size of a postage stamp. I think the I think the video sizes are like a 160 by 120. They're just pathetically small. Shot at 15 frames per second in like 256 colors. You know, my camera craps bigger files than that. Um, so the video quality is terrible. And the problem with a lot of those early CD-ROM games is that they just don't run. Um, it's not a problem that, like, if a game runs on DOS, not a problem. If a game runs on Windows 95 and up, again, not a problem. But there's this kind of weird subset of games that runs uh, on only on Windows 3.1. And those are the tough ones, because you basically have to be running Windows 3.1 to get them to run. And uh, uh, I remember most of the Star Trek games were pretty big on Windows 3.1. Um, Johnny Mnemonic was a Windows 3.1, and again, you don't want to know what I had to do. Um, I'm actually considering, seriously, going back and trying to build a Windows 3.1 box just to try and capture this video off, off these games, because a lot of them were really, really bad and worth looking at. Uh, I remember Critical Path being ass, but uh, I was just curious about The Madness of Roland, because it's, it's a cool title. I, I think it's cool. Um, I think the cover looks cool, and... The, if you actually read the back, is where you get kind of lost. In fact, I think even back in the day, people weren't fooled by this one. Because if you read the back of the box, I believe it tells you that it's an interactive storytelling adventure or something like that. They, they use the word interactive story a lot. And uh, it's bullshit. Basically what The Madness of Roland is, is it's an audiobook. It, it's a very early example of kind of a multimedia audiobook or... If you don't like the audiobook comparison, maybe you might consider it to be more of a radio drama with a PowerPoint presentation to go along with it. Um, it's an okay produced radio drama. I mean, the actors are okay. Um, it's, it, it's, it's okay. You know, that, that's about as charitable as you can be, from what I heard. I couldn't get it to run. Pardon me. Um, so... What I kind of ended up doing was I, I, I even did all my old tricks. I tried, you know, I tried DOSBox. I even tried the trick I did to get Johnny Mnemonic run. No dice. It, it wouldn't install. Nothing would work. Um, and so generally what I do if I can't... If I can't make it, I fake it in a lot of cases. So um, I would pull the 
movie files off the disc because this was before the days they actually had the movie files encoded or hidden somehow. Really, there was just a directory with all these movie files in it. So I start looking through the through the uh, the files, the, the movie files and the audio files. That's how I know it's a radio drama because I, I pretty much listened to most of it as audio files, and you know it was okay. Um, but I, I click on the movie files, and I have no idea where these movie files come from or where they fit in. I don't know anything, but I, there was this whole directory of like 50 or so movie files. Well, probably about 30. So I start looking through these files, and they're just freakish. And they're horrible, and like just, just pure, undiluted nightmares in these, in these video files. Really shitty quality, low, low graphics, crappy crap crap. But they're of things that are just bizarre. Like, uh, one guy pulling another guy off, a woman wearing a full body stocking in the woods. Uh, a guy, like, breaking down green screened against a cathedral. Um, a pregnant... I, I, I think... I couldn't make it out too clearly, because, again, the video was bad. But a pregnant woman exposing her stomach in a bridal gown, sitting on a stool with neon lights around her, with a sledgehammer. I think it's a sledgehammer, like rocking back and forth. Then there's a bride with a shotgun. Just really strange stuff, like an apple being stabbed with a knife, a baby silo- a, a baby chroma keyed against a, a, a picture of a sky. Uh, what? You saw it. I mean... And seriously, that was I was talking to uh, Jason of Until We Win, and I was I started sending him these files. It's like this is fucked up. Look at this. This is really kind of a crazy game. It gets kind of very fitting of the title, and he's like, "Yeah, this is odd. like there's nothing you can do with this." I was like, "I don't know. This kind of reminds me of the video in The Ring or Ringu, whatever." I was like, "I could cut something together to be kind of freakish. <laughs> you know, if I were to cut this together, you'd be like, I'm gonna die in seven days." <laughs> and and so that's kind of the joke here is I don't know what this game is really about all that much. I, I, get, I know the gist of it, but I don't know where these video files come from or where they fit in. I just cut them together to be, like, all fucked up, and that's the story of this thing. And so I really didn't do that much to these video files. Here's what I did. Um, whenever there's a transition between one clip or another, you'll notice there's kind of a jittery, like, film glitch effect or some kind of digital effect that, that glitches out, I did that. Or any time the, the image kind of shudders, or, or it looks like there's a bad gate in the film projector, I did that. But those videos are not me. Those videos were from the, from the CD, and I just put them together in kind of a random order and, and, and added a few orchestra stings. Like, e- even most of the music and sound effects weren't me. I added a few orchestra stings, like the... the like, the really loud crashes, you know, sometimes between edits. Basically, if it was a transition, I did that, but nothing else. Um, And that was it. And so, yeah, this is kind of a strange sentiment to share with you on Valentine's Day. I'm sorry. But in a way, it kind of fits. Because the story of the madness of Roland, um, if you were to actually experience it, from what I can tell, is that it's the story of one of Charlemagne's paladins who goes insane with uh, lust, jealousy, envy over a woman. And he can't get over it. It drives him mad, and, and he, he goes killing people or something like that. I can't tell, but he gets, he gets really bizarre. And the story is kind of told in a Rashomon sort of way, where you're kind of talking to all of a, a ton of other of Charlemagne's paladins as they explain to you what happened to Roland as he kind of spiraled into madness. And I think finally you talk to Roland as he's kind of cackling in a corner, talking about how he thinks the future will regard him or how history will regard him. I don't know. So it is kind of a love story. I don't... I, I can't explain any more than that. I mean, I, I could really post the, the audio files if you were really curious, but I don't think you are. Um, I think I got a lot more mileage out of this than, than I think probably anyone else could have. Uh, it's. I don't think it's really that interesting of a story. I was kind of bored with it. Um, it is interesting in the sense that uh, there, there's a lot of what seems to be sexual situations and, and what seems to be nudity, but there's not. Uh, the, the videos like seem to imply nudity, but I, I think all the actors are wearing like 
body stockings and dance belts, so you don't really see anything. So it, I, that's why I put the mature audiences tag on that thing, just because if you're disturbed by that. But there's really no nudity in this in this video. I, I can't even tell in many cases whether some of the people are male or female. Um, in, in one circumstance in particular, I'm like, is that just a dude with really long hair? I don't know. The video sucks. <laughs> yeah. Madness or Roland. Don't know what else to tell you. Thanks for putting up with it. <laughs> um, if you didn't like it, I'm sorry. Uh, that's This was really kind of an exercise. You know what the real reason I did this was? Um, one, just to get something out of the footage I recorded. And two, mainly as an experiment to... I, with, when it comes to making movies and making videos, and especially when it comes to learning effect software and editing software, you learn by doing. And so that I kind of got it in my head. I would cut together kind of a horror thing where I would do some effects with, with like distortions on the face and, and uh, coloring the you know color treatment and things like that. You'll notice the, the lighting is much different in the video, and that's, that's in post-production. I did that. And so I just wanted to play with some footage, make some fucked up stuff, and play with my effects software. And this, this video is entirely cut in uh, Adobe Premiere and uh, After Effects. Uh, all the effects were done in After Effects. And so I was playing with that, trying to learn by doing and, and kind of doing all these effects, edits. All these transitions were done in After Effects. So I'm kind of proud of myself for what I did here. I, I like it. You know, I, I kind of learned, I learned a lot of stuff doing that. And so now that I've learned this stuff, I can do it again and do it faster and do it better. So that was the madness of Roland. <laughs> that's, that's the story. Uh, I will probably scout out much better the, these videos before I do that. I actually, there were like three other videos, uh, not videos, but uh, three other games that I looked at that were kind of the exact same way just before I got to Madness of Roland. Um, I got one called Star Trek The Game Show, which is actually hosted by John Delancey, and it's on Windows 3.1 only. Uh, it just wouldn't run. Um, what else? There was one other. Uh, one I want to try to get working is um, there's kind of a series of games called uh, Quantum Gate and Vortex, which I think is actually very similar to Madness of Roland, where it claims to be an interactive adventure, but it's really not. It's just like an audiobook. Uh, I, I don't know why they call it interactive. Like, there's a very few, like, I don't, and I'm talking like one or two moments where somebody asks you a question and you answer like, I'm a man or I'm a woman or the, the, the interactivity is limited to like one guy will tell you, you should really talk to Roland. He's over there. And you, you are shown a map and there's only one place you can click on and that's where Roland is. And so you click on Roland and then the story just keeps going and they're like, interactivity! You know, and it's not interactive. It's basically the exact same thing as if you know, it, 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 it's what you'd call your VCR as if it were interactive, you know. Yeah, it's interactive in the sense that you can fast forward and pause and turn it off. That's interactive. <laughs> you know? um, and I, I think Quantum Gate and Vor uh, Vortex, I haven't seen them. And, but they probably are much more interesting stories. After all, they made two of them. I think Vortex is the, the sequel to Quantum Gate. I don't know anything about it, but I'll probably check it out. I don't know. Uh, I would not recommend checking out Madness of Roland. This was a very obscure curiosity that uh, it didn't pan out for me. And uh, you know, I, I made lemonade out of the lemons I got out of this one. <laughs> so, but yeah, I'll be uh, I'll be moving on to more stuff on my to do list. So uh, keep keep watching for that, and uh, look forward to the uh, to the sequel to the sequel of Captain America. <laughs> Until next time, guys. Have a scary Valentine's Day. 